The following is a non-profit fan-created review. All music, footage, and images are properties of their respective owners and are subject to fair use under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. We claim no ownership of anything save the original material. Please support the official products. Greetings and salutations, dear viewers. Welcome to another eye-popping episode of Anti-Reviews. You may be wondering where the anti-viewer is this time. Well, um... Insert time travel, parallel dimension, quantum leap, evil clone, and android replica joke here. I'm Max, and I'll be taking over this review until the big guy gets back. So the subject of this series of reviews is going to be fantasy. See, a lot of people tend to associate fantasy with Tolkien, Lewis, or even, god help me, Paolini. But the Japanese have taken their jabs at the genre, and quite a few fantasy, manga, and anime have been produced that have been both good and, well, is freezingly atrocious. So with that in mind, let's take a look at today's anime, Legend of the Legendary Heroes. Now I know what you're thinking, because I thought the exact same thing when I first watched this. Man, with a name like that, this series is gearing up to be a lampoon of the genre! Awesome! But no, no it's not. This series actually plays its core story very serious, which of course is instantly off-putting when you look at the title. Legend of the Legendary Heroes? Is that not the most ideal title for a parody series you've ever heard before? Hell, it sounds like it should be up there with shit like Dracula Dead and loving it. A waste of potential if you ask me. But hey, let's look past that and see how this series stacks up on its own. Legend of the... You know what, screw it, let's just shorten the damn thing. LOL is a light novel series written by Takaya Kagami, which finished in October of 2006 for a total of 11 volumes. It, its sequel, and its two spin-offs have been published in the Sanin light novel magazine, Dragon Magazine. It has since spawned a manga, a drama CD, and hell, even an anime adaptation. The anime, licensed and owned by Kadokawa in Japan and Funimation in the US, was produced by a studio called Zex, whose library of shows include such standards as Chu Bra and Sister Princess. This looks promising. On the other hand, its director is Itsuro Kawasaki, director of the totally badass Sengoku Basara series, as well as a storyboard writer for the truly excellent noir series. So hey, maybe the two will cancel each other out. So without further ado, let's get this train rolling! Grab your spellbooks and be sure to re-specialize in those talents. This is the review of Legend of the Legendary Heroes. God damn it, I still can't get over that title. The main character is Reiner Lute, a magician from the Kingdom of Roland who is known as the greatest in all the realm, voiced by Jun Fukuyama. Yes. So Reiner is one hell of a lazy bastard whose fondest wish is to take afternoon naps for the rest of his life. But, like any slacker, he gets his ass kicked as motivation to perform his job, which is the hunt for rare and ancient relics of heroes past. He does this all while hiding the fact that he is an Alpha Stigma Bearer, that is to say, a person who was born with enough power to murder hundreds, and whose eyes glow with red pentagrams whenever people piss him off. Because people like him are feared and hunted as monsters, reiner has got his share of issues and is actually really lonely. Aww, he just needs to be loved. <laughs> yeah, monster, kill it, kill it with fire! All jokes aside, Reiner is a very endearing character who tries to stay upbeat and always does the right thing in a crunch. In other words, perfect hero material. Accompanying our hero is the blonde bombshell warrior and assassin Ferris Eris, voiced by Ayahi Takagi. Ferris is the heir to a long line of deadly killers sworn to protect the Roland throne and has all the sword skills to prove it. So Ferris's character is pretty much under wraps and the only thing she shows a passion for is Dongo, which is used to comedic effect throughout the series. She also has this entirely absurd idea that Reiner is a degenerate rapist sex freak who likes to sleep with little girls, despite there being no evidence whatsoever that Reiner is even remotely perverted. This is, of course, a tongue-in-cheek reference to the fact that most anime protagonists are, or are mistaken for, perverts. And like most of those protagonists, Ferris ends up falling in love with Reiner Van Winkle, but that doesn't hamper their dynamic, which really is some of the best character banter I've actually seen in a while. Both of these misfits are working for His Majesty, the King of Roland, Sion Astal, voiced by Daisuke Ono. Double yes! 
Scion is the bastard child of a duke and a commoner who, after his mother's death, swore to take the throne and change the kingdom for the better. As head honcho, we see that he's well loved by the people, and hailed as the hero King of Roland for his support of virtue and all that noise. Scion is kinda like that gay guy from Berserk, except in addition to being a tactical genius and accomplished politician, he has real doubts about some of the harder choices he makes, particularly later on. But he's ready to do whatever it takes to secure peace and prosperity for his people, no matter how morally questionable, and that becomes a driving force behind the character. He's good, he's developed, and that rounds out our main cast. The supporting cast are kind of like an overgrown lawn. There's a whole leffing bunch of them, and I have to spend all day working on this. But you know what? I'm just going to give you a general overview for brevity's sake. Among the king's subjects are Clau Klong, Rear Admiral and Commander of the Roland Ground Forces. Makes sense to me. He's one of Scion's best friends and is the typical brave, passionate war hero who doesn't like trickery and butts heads with Roland's strategists. Apparently, he also murdered Scar from Full Metal Alchemist and took a hax out of the corpse because that their arm is looking mighty familiar. <laughs> This is the judgment of God, state alchemists! Speaking for the vassal state of Estable is the former princess Noah Ed, who... 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 I'm sorry, I lost track of what I was saying. <laughs> Can't imagine why. Anyway, the Lady Noah is a representative of Roland's protectorate region who, after a failed rebellion, was almost murdered by a treacherous retainer. But she was saved by Clow and, after swearing to serve in the king's court as an advisor, has since fallen for the brawny commander. Bet you their kids will have purple hair. The kingdom's black ops and tactical department is headed by Lieutenant General Moran Farad. <laughs> really? That's... that's really the look you're going for. Okay, I'm game. Let's move on. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but, but are you seeing this? I'm not quite sure why he's dressed up like a 19th century British governess, but the feathers on his mantle and the purple nail polish really serve to max out the ridiculousness of his design. It's a shame too, because Farad is a very good character. Sort of like a fantasy Kanbei Kuroda, he's a cold, ruthless strategist who will cross the line Scion won't to ensure that the king's reign is safe. And, despite coming off as a dubious character, Farad is completely loyal to Scion and is tolerated because DAMN IT HE GETS RESULTS! Good character ruined by a terrible design. Next! Speaking of ruthless, meet Lucille Eris, head of House Eris, Ferris's big brother, and the personal bodyguard to King Scion. This guy is a complete enigma. He's reserved and cryptic, and you can't help but feel that most of what Scion does in the series is because Lucille gave his okay for it. As head of an assassin house, Lucille is one motherfucker you don't want to cross because he will end your ass faster than you can say Ezio da Firenze. He is, by and large, the strongest character in the series, and seems to be able to appear anywhere at any time, as long as it's in the borders of Roland, because of... Well, I don't know, actually. Maybe the rest of the world put out a restraining order on him or something. Lastly, Lucille is voiced by Tomokazu Sugita, who voices Gintoki from Gintama. And by the way, his father, whom he murdered, is voiced by Takehito Koyasu, voice of Shinsuke Takasugi, the villain from Gintama. So yeah, basically it turns out that Takasugi is Gin's undead father come back to take revenge on him. And the final important supporting character is Milk Kalad, captain of one of Roland's elite taboo magic hunter teams, voiced by Saki Fujita. Yeah, you heard me. This little pipsqueak has the source voice of Hatsune Miku. In another shocking revelation, Milk is the woman Reiner promised to marry! God, I love that meme. 
Well, actually, they were in the same military orphanage boot camp, and they promised to marry if they both survived the training. Of course, Reiner, in typical anime fashion, doesn't remember, and Milk spends the series chasing after him, followed by her squad slash fan club. Milk's a good character because she's got a lot of emotional baggage, but also the strength to face her life with a smile. Not something most people can do. And to all the Moe Loli fans in my audience, who are probably going to pleasure themselves to her image later on, joke's on you, she's in her 20s! No! So who are the villains of this series? While LOL isn't big on the good and evil thing, it prefers to show us the people and ideals clashing. So we have antagonists, but none of them are quote-unquote evil. The opposition takes the form of the Gas Dark Empire, a powerful emergent state in the far north that, although it lies far away from Roland, is growing at an alarming rate and could conceivably pose a threat to it in the near future. This outfit is under the rule of Rayfall Idea, a powerful one-eyed warrior king who wields a sword so large that it would make Cloud Strife's sword feel small and impotent. Rayfall is actually a lot like Scion, because he only wants peace and the best for his people. But his approach to ending war is to wage it in the hopes of uniting the continent under one rule to eliminate the threat. To this end, he employs a family of pink-haired people to hunt down hero relics and give Gastark an edge. These pink people are all siblings, and they know a whole lot more about the artifacts than even Reiner does. Needless to say, the two parties clash in the race for the ancient artifacts. I really like the conflict between the two forces, by the way. It comes off as being very ambiguous because both sides have good ideals, and both are ready to do whatever it takes to come out on top. It makes the story a lot more fascinating because you don't know who to root for. <laughs> Hell, if Reiner had been working for Gastark, he could have told the same story with little to no difficulty. So that was the character section. Believe me, there's a bunch of characters I didn't cover that I probably should have, but they just didn't seem as important to the plot as the ones I did cover. But if by some regrettable bout of insanity you disagree with my flawless choices, then I apologize and let us move on.